with universities like Oxford, Cambridge and the Imperial College London, UK is home to some of the world's most prestigious educational institutes. And in this video, I'll help you understand the application process and overcome some of the challenges that a lot of students face when applying to UK for their undergraduate programs, especially students from Pakistan. So let's get started. If you're a high school student who's nearing graduation, there's a good chance that you're thinking of applying to some of the top schools in the world. However, each year, thousands of students apply to these schools and following a very intense competition, only the best of the best get to secure a spot at one of these top schools. While some people are definitely outliers and are just everything defyingly brilliant, there's only very few of them, so you don't have to worry about that. Most of your competition will hold a similar skill set and will be just about as capable as you. So you might ask yourself, if all of that is true, what makes you stand out? Well, all of the applicants might be pretty good on paper, but only very few of them can write a good personal statement, and even fewer can perform really well in interviews. So the first step in applying to UK is creating an account on UCAS. For those of you who are familiar with the internet, this shouldn't be that big a deal. You just enter UCAS in Google, you'd be returned with a series of results, and you can just select this link right here, apply through UCAS, and once you click on tests, now you have to be very mindful of all of these special requirements because once you're applying to these prestigious schools with special requirements, you must ensure that you know all of these requirements beforehand for your particular program. For instance, some of the schools such as Oxford and Cambridge do require a write-up beforehand for some of their programs. So if you're from Pakistan and your school doesn't have a guidance counselor, this might be the very first time that you're hearing the phrase personal statement. However, I want you to relax. There's nothing intimidating about it. As the name suggests, it's something about yourself. Now what most of us get wrong when we're beginning to write our personal statements for the very first time is that, like everything else, we go online and we Google how to write a personal statement. Being the highly efficient search engine that Google is, it returns us with thousands of hits with the words personal statement in them. And we start reading through all of those beautifully written personal statements of incredible, brilliant students. And we think to ourselves that, hey, if they got in using that personal statement, maybe if we write something like that, we would get in as well. But that's where we are wrong. A personal statement isn't an answer to a factual question. It doesn't have a right or a wrong answer. It's unique to every individual. Everyone would have a different personal statement based on their experiences, their interests, and their lives. If you try copying someone else's personal statement, or try molding yours into their personal statement, it just wouldn't work for you. It's supposed to be you. Be yourself. Be original. Tell them why do you want to study, what you're applying for. Do not lie to them. They're seasoned recruiters. They can smell BS from a mile away. Be original, be fun, be creative, be likable, be charismatic. And I cannot stress on this enough, be yourself. Now that's a lot of things to remember. I mean, of course, most of us haven't even tried to discover ourselves. How can we write a whole statement about ourselves? How can we write something that would basically determine our future? I could assure you that this was perhaps the most challenging part of my college journey. And what most of us don't understand is that we spend hours upon hours writing that personal statement. It's very dear to us. It's close to our hearts. Now, a recruiter doesn't have that kind of time on their hands. So they would only spend about 10 to 20 seconds reading your personal statement before discarding it. So you have perhaps a couple of seconds to make your impact, to make an impression, an impression that lasts on the recruiter. So you have to write something so interesting, so captivating, that within the first couple of lines, the recruiter is just glued to your personal statement. You have to catch their attention in such a way that it makes them crave more of it. It makes them want to find out more about you. And to do that, I would recommend an explosive start. I started my personal statement with, quote unquote, 
call me ambitious beyond sanity, but I want to cure AIDS. Now, some of you might actually think I was insane to use that sentence as the first sentence of a personal statement that I sent to Oxford. However, it did manage to land me an interview with two of their colleges, so I guess that worked. But an explosive start isn't enough. You have to ensure that the body of the statement is just as interesting as the start, if not more. This part should be the easier part to write because, I mean, this would perhaps be your life. It's just going to be as interesting as your life has been. And trust me, most of us might think that our lives aren't interesting, but we are just underestimating ourselves. We all lead different lives. We all have dis different aspects in our life. To say that our lives are interesting is just an understatement. Your uniqueness, the individuality, that is what makes your life interesting. So use that. Use the things that are unique about you. Don't use the things which are common to everyone. Don't say that you brush your teeth two times a day or before going to bed because everyone does that. Try something like you learned how to speak French at just three years of age or maybe started playing violin at five years of age. Stuff that makes you unique, stuff that makes you incredible, stuff that makes you sellable. You are basically marketing yourself here, so you have to ensure that you market yourself right. You have to ensure that the customers do purchase you. That kind of came out wrong, but yeah, you get the point. But on their own, an explosive start and a captivating body just aren't enough. You have to ensure that your personal statement has a proper closure. You have to ensure that you leave the reader satisfied, if not craving for more, which is far better. For those of you who have watched Christopher Nolan's movies, Interstellar, Inception, and many more, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That very last minute cliffhanger that leaves you craving for more. It's very powerful. If you make the recruiter feel the same way, there would be no way to know more about you, except for recruiting you, giving you a spot on the college. So, trust me when I say this, closure is perhaps the most important part of your personal statement after the beginning, the opening. Now, even though I've told you all I know about personal statements, I still want you to go and check this link out. This page has a video from UCAS and it tells you how to write your personal statement for your undergrad admissions. Now, I did not check out any other resource except for this. I did not watch any other videos. I did not read any other personal statements online because I did not want my personal statement to get influenced by them. So I just viewed this video, I watched it, I followed it religiously, and I ended up with a personal statement that got me places at King's College London, at UCL, at Imperial College London, Queen's Mary University, and landed me two interviews at Oxford. So I'd say that was pretty effective. So I'd suggest you really check this link out. But once your personal statement is done, once you're done writing that, once you've submitted your application, there isn't much that you can do except wait. Once you have submitted your personal statement and are waiting on a decision, I would suggest improving on the skills that you have already mentioned in your personal statement. For instance, I mentioned CRISPR-Cas9 in my personal statement. Now it had only been recently discovered and I didn't know much about it. I just knew that it was a revolutionary tool and it had the potential to change the entire gene editing landscape and offer cures and do so much more. But that's all I knew. I didn't know the mechanisms. I didn't know how it did, you know, the whole cutting and editing of the genome. And I didn't know what made it better than all of the other tools that we previously had. So I read more about CRISPR and I understood it better. And surely enough, that was the first question that one of the tutors asked me during my interview with Oxford. And that's what I'll be talking about more in my next video. My interview with Oxford, how it went, what I got wrong, what you can do right, what you expect, what kind of questions I got, and the overall experience. So good luck guys, I hope these videos help you and I hope you get a spot at your dream college. Take care.